Lynn Soto Memorial. Look at how that's built up, guys. That's that's the memorial for Maddie. And then the presser. So I'll keep Twitter open, guys. I'll keep checking, but I haven't seen anything come across the tweets. Okay, so this is a diary. So he, she has a timeline of all this stuff. Ruby, A-J-R-E, come down to Jody's to help spring clean. Meet Jeremy Juzzy. And then Jody goes to Salt Lake City to meet with Jeremy Juzzy and Brad Wilcox. R refuses to do wall sits. He says he is done. I don't know. We haven't heard that. We haven't heard that yet. There's no confirmation on in the media yet. So we're waiting to see. Um, R, t- something to stay outside, sleep outside, only come in to go to the bathroom and shower. E refuses to work, screams, has hair shaved off. This is hard. This is hard, guys. This is hard. R runs away around 1.15 a.m. Ruby finds him at 3.14 a.m. It is very weird, Roxy. I don't know why. Jody, E, and J drive to Arizona and find property, land. What were they looking for land for? The diary now. We just took a little breather. We're back at it. These are all redacted pages. Okay, July 9th, 2023. What day were they arrested? Weren't they arrested around this time? Coming in hot hoodie? I'm not sure if we have a hoodie. I'll check. If we don't have one, I will. Um. Thank you for the feedback, Stephanie and Stacy. Thank you. I love that because it, it really is. It really is. An, it, it really is quality stuff. Okay, so July 9th, 2023, Sunday. R turns 12 tomorrow. I never envisioned him being 12. And still pooping, peeing himself. Satanic choices lead to one becoming destitute, even in the most affluential homes. July 10th, 2023, Monday. It's our birthday, and he doesn't even know what month it is. E and R have been in so, in so much deviant behavior, they won't control their bodily functions. They are both fur- furriers of their selfish, sinful lifestyle is being intervened upon. I told R he emulates a snake. He slithers and sneaks around looking for opportunities when no one is watching. And then he scurries. If he wants to emulate the Savior, he needs to be 100% obedient with exactness, no wavering, no hiding. She's really, really, really a sick person. It really isn't bad, Indy. They ship worldwide. Streamlabs is an online streamer um, site, so they have been global for a long time because it's started out with gamers. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The shipping may not be what you think. Our lies. I mean, all the time. He is a compulsive liar. I never would have suspected this entire experience is a shock to my system. I never would have suspected the cold, dead heart R has. She should never, ever be out. Something, nowhere to look. He always has been able to get what he wants, and now that he can't, he is furious. I told him if he divulged anything, he would automatically begin repenting. I asked if there was, that's a whole page is blank. I told R that he needs God. I invited him to fast and pray. R is in and out of possession. He is workable and calm for a bit. And then angry and defiant the next. The only consistent thing about R is that he lies. E is better behaved with Jody. That's Eve. 
She likes to think she can still manipulate me. I ga- She's nine. I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distracting with her hair. R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his mother. 7-11-23, Tuesday. Big day for evil. E manipulates me. She won't scream when Jody is around. But with me, she wails all night. Oh, my God. E screamed and cried and would hit her head on the tile floor. My fucking God. Oh, my God, guys. This is bad. Today, Jody confronted her. E admits to putting on a show for her mother. E says she wants to be pitiful. R was told to stand in the sun with his sun hat. This is trigger warning. He is defiant. No. I told... Tell him a couple more times. R or should I or I should say his demon stays in the shade. I push R in the sun. R comes back. I come back with a cactus poker. When I poke his back to get in the sun, R doesn't even flinch. I poke him on the neck. He is in a trance and doesn't appear to feel anything. Jody taps him on the cheeks to wake him up. We are reading Ruby Frankie's diary. Why would she document this stuff? The devil doesn't like when you get your subject to something, to truth. R, do you know I love you? Yes, ma'am. R, do you know G. G Joe loves you? Yes, ma'am. Do you know the survivor loves you? Yes, ma'am. Who's G? Jo- what did he call? I have to call Jody. G Joe. G I Joe. R wants out of his outcomes. After our talk, R stays in the shade. I take my old mop water. Oh my god. And go to R. I show R the water. Then I pour the water on R. It's hot outside. It feels good, doesn't it? Yes. An hour later, G. Joe, take R on a little... It's got to be Jody. G. Joe, take R on a little walk to the pool. She talks on how R, R has love twisted. If R likes something someone does, he calls it love. If he doesn't, he thinks it's not loving. G. Joe then pushed R into the pool. R swam to the side. G. Joe pulled him out. Feel good? Refreshing? Yes, ma'am. What a... Dude, these people are awful. I went out a couple hours later and asked if he wanted the pool again. Yes, ma'am. Will you let me push you in? R laughed. Then tried not to act too excited. R cooled off and went back to his spot. I put my hands on his face. R, have you ever heard someone talk underwater? Yes, ma'am. I know R is in there somewhere. I know deep down under all this anger, you can hear me. It may sound like I'm underwater with you, but hear me, I love you. R got teary. Then I put my hand tightly. No, ma'am. This lady can never get out. She can never get out. Then I put my hand tightly over his nose and mouth. I'm coming to you in this water and putting my hands on your nose and mouth. The devil lies and says I'm hurting you. Something you, but are what I am, what am I really doing? You are putting oxygen on me to help me breathe. Yes, that's right. She is a sick, deranged piece of crap, okay? Aha, Diana got the I Hear Nancy. Why are people such idiots t-shirt? Thank you, Diana. Dude, I know this is bad. Bad. R looked like he wanted to beat me up this morning and then he was intrigued and interested. And then two hours later, he drinks water from the hose. Steals water. Drinking water from the hose 
is stealing water? La, 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 la. R is compulsive. He feels no remorse for his choices. He shuts down. Says he wants to go to jail. I wonder why. I wonder why. R says he worships the devil and has no interest in changing. I want the outcome of being changed, but I don't want to do the work that it requires. R doesn't actually know what jail means. <laughs> you do, bitch. He has no comprehension what throwing your life away means. You do, bitch. He just wants the immediate gratification of sitting in an air-conditioned car ride to juvie. He wants stimulus. R is so back and forth. R stole water. He was angry and looked like he wanted to fist up. I put my hands on his shoulders and told him I love him. I told him he has no idea what he's doing, but I do. I can help him. I told him, give your demon friend a message for me. I will not rest. I will not stop. I will not leave. I will win, fight him until the day you die. I have the power of God and he must obey. I beat Satan. I win. Then I looked in our eyes and with power and authority commanded, get out now, go. R immediately smiled, cried, slumped, sotten. He's gone. He left. I took E and R on a car drive to the Shivnitz something gas station. I told E she was never going home. I showed her pictures of her. This woman is a fucking bitch. I don't care if YouTube demonetizes me. I can't. I told her she was never going home. I showed her pictures of her on the swing underneath the big tree. She saw a girl who was hiding who enjoyed tricks. I told her I saw a daughter of God with divine worth. E manipulated during the car drive. R appeared to soften. I stopped the car and we all got out to view the sunset. Oh, fucking nice. I told E she needs to stop her fantasy. She is not innocent. She can become innocent through repentance. Don't waste more time. What the fuck? R and E have been counting days. R did know yesterday was his birthday. He was 12. His little birthday. It was my granddaughter's birthday yesterday. I don't know if I can handle that. Wow. E told me she figures they had been here eight weeks. Eight fucking weeks. I asked E if she felt like she had made progress over the eight weeks. Yes. I told her she was delusional. She has made no progress. She continues to lie and manipulate. Last night, <clears throat> her screaming and her screaming and trance head banging were evidence of no change. These kids are going to be are fucked up, man. How do you heal from this? How do you heal from abusing your children to the point where they're in a trance banging their heads? Where they're poked with cactuses? And they don't feel it. Y'all, I can't. This lady makes me absolutely sick. <sighs> okay. All right. I need to go off camera. For a few minutes. I need a smoke. Okay. Here we go. 7-12-23 Wednesday. Took the kids on a four-hour car ride. We stopped at Gunlock Lake and I shared my love for them. We 
We watched a baby cow get loose and walk into the road in front of us. I made the analogy of the not-so-wise calf to them. I was keeping them safe when they want to run in the road. We drove up to Vago. I don't know if that's right. I bought a volcano pie. Wow. I told the kids the pie was to thank Jijo for her home, care, and time. R appeared engaged. E was man- manipulative. This is the day E anticipates breaking her two day fast. Two day fast. In other words, starving them. When we got home to G Joe's, G Joe's, I let R know she has hardened her heart. And we'll do one more day of fasting to invite her to humble. E flips out and begins ranting. She refuses to get up. She lies on the floor all day speaking dishonest chants. Because G. Joe is on the phone with clients, I don't go in and match her level of aggression all day, E makes rhymes about my mom stars, starves me and calls it fasting. My mom won't lift two fingers and bring me food because all she does is lie on the bed and eat brownies. My mom says she is the most loving mom in the world, blah, blah, blah. If I can't ever go home, then what's the point in being obedient? I'm going to run away. Jijo helped me intervene after work. Pattern, it says. Allowing lies to be spewed gives the devil a platform. Articulating lies reinforces possession. The longer the lies are allowed to be spewed, the harder the in- intervention and physical, the, in- the harder, oh, the larger the intervention and physical, the intervention needs to be. I cut off, I cut more off E head. Oh my God. I cut more off Ehead. We doused her her with water in the dog wash. The fuck, man. E said she wanted to run away. Jody told E she has no idea what is waiting for her. Seven thirteen twenty three. I may have forgotten to write this. On the eleventh, I took our face in my hands and spoke to him through blank. Love you. I told him to send the da- the demon a message. I will not give up. I will not leave. I'm going nowhere. Get out. R released the demon, and he has been very workable ever since. This morning, the 13th, R broke his fast with brown rice, lentils, black beans, and chicken and water. A hornet kept buzzing around his chicken. I told R to think about the hornet. To think of the hornet as Satan. Would you become pals with Satan? Would you sell your soul or chicken to a hornet? He will sting you in the end. R trapped the bee with his sun hat. E broke her fast with cheesy potatoes, steak, water, oatmeal, and water. R is full of piss and vinegar. She is mad as a hornet and she doesn't call the shots. It's been about 90 minutes since R8. I warned him that food would either energize him to truth or defiance. He is a, he is defiant again. He pooped his pants and telling me no. His, oh my God. His poop is too watery to be fasting. R admits to stealing water three times yesterday. R lies and feels no remorse. E is cheating. These selfish, selfish children who desire only to take, lie, and attack have zero understanding of God's love for them. They don't know Jijo is selling her home. This priceless Snow Canyon gem so she can purchase land where these two can work. Oh, 
What? The hell? G. Joe has been looking for property with Soros Cactus and is feeling more imminent the need to get these kids to open land. She is willing to consider less than ideal property for them. Quote, this is a spiritual matter. I can't in good faith leave you with these two gremlins. I won't do that. These are God's children. Soros don't matter when souls are on the line. End quote. That's Jody. One hour later, we move quickly. Jody and Jay are going on a road trip to look at property in Arizona. Ruby has some cash in the bank. Why is she, if she wrote this? Why is she referring to herself in the first person? Or the third person. If the property is right, we can move on financing immediately. We decided the escalation of the kids awesome. is not manageable here now. R is now sitting angry, defiant. E is lying on the floor. We will bring them in. R, I will clean up out in the desert as he has pooped himself. He will then stand sit on the patio shaded. Now I'll see him from the kitchen. E, I will bring into the cool house and she can sit in the pantry. They will think they won. They will think they got what they wanted. They will relax. Then pop. We will drop them like hot potatoes out in the desert. Their new home. Quote, you are going to get exactly what you asked for. Oppositional force is required for growth, development, maturity. E and R have never experienced oppositional force. They are very weak-minded. Really? It's upside down. Pattern, it says again. Sending evil away in a long-time possessed person is not a one-and-done deal usually. These wicked spirits in E&R have been pals long before this life. How E&R got to come and get a body can only be explained in advocating, oh my gosh, it's really windy here, to be their mother. This is not a conceited statement. God knew I would take my responsibility seriously. Jody volunteered to help. These two souls are very weak at my, weak of mind. They are fools, truly. E said she would choose the devil over God. What arrogant spew. God is patient not to split her with a bolt of lightning. You do not tempt a God who controls your very breath. The disdain and hatred they have for God is beyond my ability to describe. My spirit is offended. I shudder to think I would never have seen this had I not pushed on them. Holding principle. Boundaries will show you how much possession a soul has. The more boundaries, the more the soul will reveal itself. Trial will reveal a soul because of the inherent limits built into a tribulation back to sending evil away articulating truth drives evil away this is a powerful intervention for the possessed even if you can start by agreeing to something truthful you are a daughter of god true yes ma'am following up on articulating a desire for evil to leave the demonstration of obedience is powerful Demonstrating a willingness to follow truth as a pattern. Whatever the fuck that even means. The Savior used in his interactions. Go sell all you have and follow me. Go and sin no more. Go wash seven times. Go and tell no one. Go and tell the city. Go and preach my gospel. Go feed my sheep. If you can engage in a weak-minded soul in a physical activity of obedience, you can begin to break the bond Satan made with the weak Physically stop the acting out behaviors and begin physically doing good. Farm work, lifting boxes, exerting energy, exercises, jump rope, milking cows, weeding a garden, digging trenches. Satan cannot be where there is good. Being, doing, sweating for good. Heavy physical intensity. Capture your attention. The problem for e &R is the hard labor is all. I don't know what that is. For the sake of lifting does not have meaning or do good. We need property where a ranch can be built. 
Good can be done. Outcomes of prosperous choices can be seen, experienced, felt. And the kids need a good kick from a horse and a cactus to run into. They need natural outcomes. I asked R what he was thinking about since he was sitting in the shade and he had what he wanted. R answered, what I want. Me, what do you want? R, more different foods in a soft bed. Me, why don't you ask Satan? Do you think Satan will give you those things? R, no. Me, why not? R, because he doesn't have the power. Me, why would you serve a God who has no power to give you your desires? Dumb. R, silent. Blank had another episode with demons. She gives herself to them. She agreed to stop being deceptive with her facial expressions and crying and whining. Whining is the devil's voice. Whining is always a demon. Blank, hurt facial expressions blame me for her misery. It is E at the center of her misery. Her face is deceptive. After E did stares, she sat on the park bench looking at the mountain views. She was told to sit and be still and eat her dinner. Carrots, hummus, grilled cheese, water. E, in a power play, brought her empty plate to the door and then removed her sun hat. Oh, what a power play. E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair. If she is going to act sick, she can look sick. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before. She would do two sets of boxes stairs with a five minute break. She did the first set easy and agreeably. After five minutes of rest, she began whimpering. When she got to the bottom of the stairs, she slipped and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash and shaved her head. Then back to the boxes, I told E. Blank. Yes, ma'am, with tears. Me. It's heavier than boxes, right? E. Yes, ma'am. E. I can help you find relief. You have told so many lies about me that you refuse to be obedient. Why do you keep being buddies with Satan? E. I don't want to work. Me. Don't you see it's because you follow Satan that you keep doing boxes? If you were humble, you would be inside making pancakes with Julie and me. E agreed to sit on the park bench and think about her choices. I made it very clear. If she were to move, get up, fidget, talk, take her hat off, she would go back to work. That's why she wasn't moving. She was scared to move. And where was fucking Kevin on their birthday? When it was that boy's birthday, where was fucking Kevin? She promised to be obedient. After an hour on the bench, she, Eve began moving and looking around. I pulled her into the house and gave her more boxes. Julie is her older sister. Now to R. Me. You like sleeping on the hard ground? I slept in a soft bed. R. I slept really well. Me. You are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? R. Yes, ma'am. Me. Do you expect me to feed you? R. Yes. Me. I got over by him. I will feed R. I will not feed a demon. So I will check on you in a bit. And if you want food, then be prepared to tell the truth about your behaviors. Tell the truth of who I am. An hour later, me. You ready? She was one of the girls that was at Pam Botcher's. R. No, ma'am. Me. So you'd rather have no food and worship the devil? R. Yes, ma'am. E. Does first set of books decently. 10 minute break. E upset to do boxes. Get them done. What's in all these boxes? What is in all these boxes? Sits on park. Oh, gets them done. Sits on park bench one minute. Then picks up G. Joe's blossom off plant. Defiant. She picked a flower. She picked a fucking flower. More boxes. She refuses. She goes to sleep on the basement floor. R. Stand up. Stop picking your nose. The kids both pick their noses until they bleed. Distraction. Me. You happy? R. No. Me. Following Satan doesn't make you happy. Shocker. So Satan can't feed you? Who's supposed to feed you? R. God. Me and R. Christ. Me, this is a game you play. Who brings you food? R, you. Me, you want to leave the demons? R, I don't want too humble. I told Blank I wanted to give him dinner with chicken. He needs to acknowledge his behaviors. 
He tells me he is missing his opportunity to repent. This is not acknowledging his behaviors. I tell Blank he is treating me and Gijo the way he believes he really deserves to be treated. I bring him dinner of brown rice, beans, lentils, and water. He takes the bowl and begins eating. I say, no, thank you. Are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing just brought you dinner? R. Well, I would say thank you, but I wouldn't really mean it. With that, I reached down and grabbed his dinner and water, and I said, wow, wow. R tried going back on what he said with some explanation, and I stopped him. I will not talk with a demon. Your soul is damned, and I will not hear your damnable words straight to bed. E was, E has started walking downstairs without a box. She is now slipping and falling on purpose. When E was outside today, it was hot. She acted like she was dying, so pitiful. I told her, E, the heat in hell is much hotter. God is going to burn the wicked, so either get used to it or start changing. E, I don't really believe that's actually going to happen. Kids are all in bed. E ate mashed potatoes and turkey and milk. G. Joe and Jay are looking, must be Julie, are looking at RV trailers. These kids have no idea the sacrifices being made for them or Jesus' sacrifice already made. These, there are days and nights that reveal God's most poignant mercies and miracles. Last night, God gave me a miracle. I absolutely will never, ever forget. I know when God gives you an errand, you do the best you can to fulfill it. He will protect you. I went to bed around 12, 10 a.m. E on the floor next to my bed. R on the patio outside my side and glass window. Oh man, just writing this, I am shaking, shaking. If Pam hadn't, that's Pam Botcher. If Pam hadn't volunteered to take A to American Fork for her ALT test, then I would not have been here. And my life in Jody's and my families would forever be different. At 2.45 a.m., I woke straight up out of bed, straight up. I couldn't see R. He was gone. I opened the sliding glass door and there was no sign of him. This is when the kid escaped the first time. He did leave an arrangement of rocks and letters and words. He wrote me a message. Too scared. Forgot how to read. I ran to Jody's room and woke her up. So they weren't even in the same room. She came out with me. The message said in pebbles, jail. I will call when I get there. Jay and I scoured the house yard. Jody got flashlights. Jody and blank and Jay took her car and I got blank up and went in mine. Oh God. Oh father. We need a miracle. We need your help now. Send the hosts of heaven. Show us where blank is. Please, please, Father, answer now. I've done everything you've asked. Protect me. Perfect. Protect Jody. Protect us. Protect us. I heard in my head, go right. I went left and all the way to the roundabout on the main street to rule it out and make sure he hadn't reached the main road yet. No sign of R. I turned back to go down the dip and then turn right. Father, 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 hear me now. I go right, then right again. This road doesn't look familiar. I speed up to cover as much road as I can. Racing the sun, racing the devil. Then I see R walking on the left side of the road. I call Jody to let her know. I turn the car around and stop. I get out of the car. Blank is shocked to see me, or R is shocked to see me. Get in the car. You shocked to see me? R nods his head and gets in. Blank in the back. Me and R in the front. 2.45, I woke up. 3 o'clock, we leave in cars. 3.14, I call Jody with R. The sun started light, lighting the roads just an hour and a half later. The devil wants me in prison. My children dead. I meet Jody back home. We deliver these kids would have ended up dead. Um, we deliver I meet Jody back home. We deliberate in the car while Jay I can't read that. Go back to bed. R stands in the garage where we can see him. He has zero remorse, zero fear, zero expression. He is cold, calloused, and hard. Angry he isn't calling the shots. Jody and I agree to buy ourselves time until we have more of an environment conducive to an intervention. We need land. The spirit told Jody very clearly, don't let these kids' choices ruin your life. We have a we have work to do. You can force repentance. 
to de-escalate the situation, I brought R into the house. I had, I tied a rope to my feet and him, to my waist and his. R will now sleep in a soft bed with me. Oh, my God. 7 a.m., R slept. The devil got a bed. Jody taught exaggeration in class. Jay loaded the cooler. I put the kids in my car and took a drive. 8 a.m., a man came to look at Jody's house. 8.30, Jody and I meet at the Chiawitz gas station. E and J, Jody, take off to Tucson. I drive back to the house with R. He comes in the house. He doesn't leave my sight. I feed him chicken, rice, lentil, beans, but add a glass of milk. He sits at the counter and eats. He got what he wanted. I give him the book, Theo something characters. He gets a pen in his journal. He takes notes. To the onlooker, he appears to be a well-behaved, studious young man. And wouldn't I be thrilled? My son, who wanted to run away, now by my side, reading and writing, wouldn't I be relieved? No. I know that in order to keep my son, I will need to put him back under sedation. I unhooked him from all the bells and whistles and asked him to breathe and thrive on his own. And he went into a rest and stress. Sedation. Back to sedation we go. The demon is still here and I purposely put R back into a slumber. What the fuck? Hibernate. To watch R go into this awful state of compliance, knowing the demon he harbors in his heart is so, so sick. Like stitching up a patient, knowing you didn't get all the cancer out and knowing it's only a matter of time before your patient keels over. R and E do not want to repent. They hate God for their own behaviors and words. I now see how perfectly reasonable people walk around hating God and worshiping the devil yet appear like good old Joes. Good guys, there is a soul killing infection in my child and my hand is forced to not remove the infection. Agency does not allow me to rid the infection. Agency? R and E like the infection. It's so sick. 8.18 p.m. Just over 12 hours after finding R, teaching class and leaving, Jody sends me a text. Blank. Er, quote, I found the land. The devil does not want us to take R and E out of society. He did not want Jody finding this property. He wanted Jody and I down at the police station at 8.18, not discovering a place to bring intervention to his entanglement of my children. The devil, what? He didn't know Jody. Oh, how the good Lord is to those who risk everything to follow him and bring others to him. The hosts of heaven are on our side. My children will never know the sacrifices and lives put on the line to offer a chance for their salvation. Ar can only think that he likes the taste of milk and reading again. Last night is July 16th. Last night I tied myself to R. Full night of sleep. Woke up or 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. This is disgusting. R showers while I watch. What is wrong with this lady, man? I shower while R is in the closet. I can see the closet door as I shower. R eats chicken, rice, beans, lentils with cheese on a corn tortilla. Three sets of 10 push-ups. Reads Theophrasis, whatever. Jody is on her way home. E spent the ride laying down with face facing the back of the seat. She doesn't know where they went or why. One might ask, as I, I myself have, what if we had taken this slower? Would the children have been on board if we hadn't boundaried them so quickly and so clearly? What if instead of a full day of box carrying, we would have done an hour and breaks and reading and then back to boxes? My answer is, well, yes, the kids would have complied, but they would not be repenting. And they would have given the impression they were repenting. This tells me right here she knew that this was wrong. They needed things to get hard, fast, intense, shocking change, immediate discomfort, stress to their systems. Why? Because they divulged their secrets. They could have confessed in truth, taking personal responsibility, responsibility for the discomfort they were causing.
change the environment of the kids slowly and more reasonably or comfortably, we would have allowed the dumb hypnosis and sleep to stay over the child. We needed to wake the child up to the state of reality. Show them where they really are, the pit of hell. The hope was that they would choose to go to God for forgiveness, to admit their awful state. Instead, they hid. They wanted to lie to themselves that what they did wasn't bad, that they were the victims. They, me and Jody, are the persecutors. That burning in hell isn't real. What God is that made of God doesn't even exist. They deny the power of God. I told R today that he is sedating his choices to do wickedly. I don't want to do that anymore. My response, yes, you do. You stood alone with only you and your choices and you literally would stand it. You ran away. You refused to sit stand with your choices. And now you are in the house with milk, AC and a book and you quite like it, don't you? Yes, ma'am. If you really didn't want to want evil anymore, you would say, mom, thanks for the book, but I want to do boxes today. Oh, yeah. Or I want to stand with my choices. You won't do that, will you? No, ma'am. See, I want to make it clear to you. You have not made any shifting or change. You are damning your soul. R goes back to writing. Yes, ma'am. Weak-minded, undisciplined brat. Note to myself. I never clearly saw the devil in wickedness until recently. Because I didn't see evil clearly, I didn't combat him. I padded evil and placated wickedness. My love of God was sincere, but assumed others' love for God was sincere as well. I was deceived. July 19th is completely redacted. July 23rd. To begin a separation from evil towards God, blah, blah, blah. All the darkness needs to be exposed to light. And once the lies and sin is revealed, the body must engage in good work. And the good works needs to be painful. Otherwise, the ser- service becomes another feel-good distraction. A day at fasting and prayer for me after learning my children have been spawns of Satan. R has been out of control. P, poop, lie, steal, run away. E, crying, wailing. You could not know what this has been like unless you were here. Jody and I took E out to the desert. She refused to stay quiet and would scream and scream. Jody found a reservation cemetery. Chivwitz Cemetery. She went out in the heat barefoot. E still tried to run. She screamed for another family. Water, food, care, love. Oh, Eve, a manipulative ploy. You are loved. After a couple hours of screaming and speaking nonsense, Blank finally lay down in the road quiet. We took her home. We took E and R out and J the next day. E and R barefoot to increase the discomfort, to decrease the running away. The task at hand was to la, weed la, the cemetery. La, 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 Huge la, la. sagebrush, pokies, thorns, broken glass, garbages, overfull. We spent a couple of hours filling black bags and G. Joe's truck bed. The kids began to mellow out a bit. Our mellow out? R looked for shade and cheating. We went out the next day and again today. Five hours of weed pulling finally started getting the hang of it. This is getting easier. I feel I'm getting stronger. I want to pull the weed out of my heart. What am I doing with my life? I don't want to live like this anymore. All children need the experience of pulling obnoxious weeds, sweating in the sun, working while thirsty and knowing what doing an ominous act of service feels like. They are each begging to see how nice the cemetery looks after days of their hard work. Yesterday, R was devious and put his head in the toilet. He said he was hot and wanted to cool off. Jody and I reflected how disgusting and deviant that is. It's a problem that R has no problem being gross. July 25th, Tuesday, 7 to 8 a.m., women's group. 8.30, Ruby takes E, R, and J to Chivwitz Cemetery. Each child is given a bag to pick up broken glass and weeds. We work for about 15 minutes, and a red vehicle with a woman, Indian, shows up. She sits and watches us for about 15 minutes, taking pictures or video. I tell the kids to stay right by me and keep their faces from being pictured. We continue to pull weeds. The woman gets out of her vehicle walks towards me. 
What are you doing here? You don't belong here. This isn't your land. You are trespassing. I tell her I am weeding. She tells me, how would you feel if I came and poked around your cemetery? What are you stealing? Me, nothing. We are weeding, picking up trash. She wants to know what's in the bags. I say weeds and broken glass. You can see for yourself. She tells me to leave the bags and get off her land. It's not, quote, it's not good enough for you that you come and take all our land. And now you want more? What you have isn't good enough? You have to come and take our cemeteries too? What's wrong with you? You were not raised right. So much disrespect. I told her, I do not mean any disrespect. I'm honoring your people. I'm offering. She would not let me get any words in. I collect my children and walk to the car. She yells at the kids that they will grow up to be just like their mother, white and full of privilege. Mind your own business. Get out. I'm filing a police report. I tell the kids to get in the car and she wants me to wait so she can get a good photo of us. The license plate. I don't think so. We drive off as she stumbles to get her camera app up. This woman was projecting all her anger, aggression onto me. She told me I was walking around acting like I owned the place when that is what she was doing. She wasn't raised right. She was disrespectful. We learn to talk. We leave and talk to ENR about how this woman was attacking us with her distortion. A couple days ago, we met a woman, blank, who thanked us for helping keep the graveyard clean. And now this woman tells us we are aggressive when really she is the aggressor. I told the kids is exactly what they're doing. I'm helping them and they mock and reject my help. God sent me to help them repent and they turned me away. The kids seem a bit affected because they are so numb. I don't know how long it will hold. R is very unemotional. E, not so much. She is seeing and hearing evil. I told her that she invited evil. It's her ch- it's her charge charge to send them away. You created this E. The good news is because you created this, you can destroy this. Send them away. August 1st, Tuesday. Jody and Jay went to Tucson to look at property of 500 acres. E and R are both defiant and unwilling to soften. E this week perpetually screamed outside. Jody and I accommodated her and took her to hell hole road. Wow. Yes, there is such a road on your way to Las Vegas. She was to run on the dirt road. She, they took her to hell hole road. She was to run on the dirt road. She ran for a bit and then started manipulating. I told her to run up an incline on a hillside, touch a tree and return 100 yards max. She threw herself into a tree. Jody pulled her out, breaking her flip flops. After an hour of E jumping in bushes, we got in the truck to find a cactus. Blank walked right up to the cactus and threw herself in the middle of it. It was unhuman. She acted like it didn't hurt at all. She cuddled right in. I watched her press her foot up against a cactus ear. I watched with my mouth open. She is so numb. After being cozy with the cactus, E got up and spoke with Jody for about 10 minutes. Jody and E walked to the truck and I rolled down the window. E said, May I have permission to speak? Yes. Can I have another chance at running the hill? Yes. We got in the truck and drove to the hill. E gets out and comes to my window. Mother, what would you like me to do? I instructed her to run to the dead tree and then come back. E replied, I would rather jump into a cactus. What evil, what deception. This girl would choose to be shot and die than to humble and do what she is told. There is no pain point where she will turn. The next day, July 30th, Sunday, we put E in the closet to contemplate what to do. She screams much of the day. She doesn't get water if she screams. She refuses to eat. July 31st, Monday. Jody wakes up from a dream. God, God let her know we have done everything we can to get E attention. Lord, don't continue these physical interventions. They will only bring resentment. E is angry about her feet, 
dress her wounds, and leave her to me. This intervention gives the opportunity for E to soften and see that we aren't hurting her. Jody cleansed her her heels. The hydrogen peroxide didn't sting. Oh, I'm sure it didn't. E is numb to it. The spirit was very strong. As Julie and I witnessed, Jody cleaning what didn't deserve to be cleaned. After dressing the wounds, Jody carried her back to the closet. E did scream and sulk and ask for water. I gave her lunch, leftovers over several meals she wouldn't eat, and she finally ate. I gave her water and then the scriptures. This is the first opportunity to have reading material since coming to Jody's. Me, when you see God, he will judge you out of these books. Did you honor your mother? No. Do you keep, did you keep his commandments? No. Did you repent? No. You are in big trouble. You better get really familiar with what's in here. Our feet are swollen from standing. He is angry. Nobody cares. I told him he is acting like a man having a heart attack and gets his feelings hurt because nobody cares about the sliver in his finger. When your soul is dying, nobody cares about your feet. August 2nd, Wednesday, Jody and Jay are still away. E is distracted by being in the house, getting socks, being held and carried and out of the elements. She reads her Bible. She ate her beans and rice, chicken. She's quiet. R sat outside yesterday and didn't manipulate. I asked R why he didn't manipulate yesterday. He said because he wanted to change. I said, no, that's not true. He didn't manipulate because you weren't com you weren't uncomfortable. You weren't hot. Today, Blank is standing outside on the patio by the room. It's raining. The rain is doing what? R, washing what it touches, the rocks. Me, yes, you desecrated those rocks. And the rain is cleaning them. Let it clean you too. Blank pooped himself. He is angry. August 6th, our rage comes out as he can't have what he wants, which is to serve the devil, a.k.a. have no responsibility. And have me, mom. Um, tout on him, coddle him. He wants both. Feed me, hug me, be tender with me, shower me in praise and affection and let me lie to you, abuse you. Today he raged for hours. Fuck you at least 50 times. I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm never going to change. Take me to jail where I belong. August 7th, blank will come start fixing the basement so Jody can sell her home. This is great news. Only blank is yelling obscenities. Jody asked, R, what are you going to say when you see God? Fuck you. R answered, sure. Blank canceled. This gave us a day for blank at the end of the day. He was docile, com compliant. E cried today, compliant. April 8th, blank is very defiant, found his fingers poopy. He keeps pooping, peeing his pants. Within five minutes of him going to the bathroom, he went in his pants. Tried hiding it from me. Later, the spirit told him to ask me to ask him some questions. I asked them from an assumption position. That's redacted. August, I can't read that. Mom to R, you keep saying you are unwilling to do uncomfortable things, but I watch you continuously do uncomfortable things the devil tells you to do. You would rather be uncomfortable than be obedient. This isn't really about being uncomfortable. This is about adamantly refusing obedience. You would rather be uncomfortable than obedient. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Mom to R, when did you sell your soul to the devil? R, two or three. Mom, did he come to you or you to him? R, he came to me. Mom, and what is he giving you in exchange for your soul? Money, fame, strength, a person? R, nothing. I will tell R can keep, can still keep his soul. He can have a life. He blank to stay here. I told him to think something, wants to be obedient to a devil who offers nothing in exchange for everything. R becomes aggressive and destructive. He started banging and hitting doors. I went in and kicked him, knocked this off. R continues to be destructive and violent. I put on a pair of boots. I went in and kicked him again. You want me to stop? What are you getting from Satan when he tells you to kick the door? Huh? Nothing but more pain. You want me to help you? Yes. No. Ruby, you want me to feed you? R, yes. Ruby, no. You want me to shower and provide for you? Yes. Ruby, no. You want to ser serve the devil and fight me and destroy all that I provide and then expect me to give to you? 
Go ask the devil to help you. Go ask the devil to feed you. I left R. It was quiet, contained in the closet. I did leave him yelling. I got that you're rageful. I got that you're angry. You should be, but you've got to aim that anger in the correct direction. You keep aiming it at me, and I'm trying to help you get your life back. Get angry and denounce Satan. When I left, R was quiet for a bit, then started calling Satan a big lying piece of baloney. He continued raging and yelling and crying. I believed you, and what did you give me? Nothing but pain. You lie, and I believed you. I'll admit it. I've been a fool to follow you, but no more. It's not too late. I can turn my life around. Get lost. Get lost. I can get my life back through obedience. Is this sincere? His actions will show. R is manipulating his hand. Wet his pants. Ruby to R. You cannot manipulate your way out of pain. The only way out of pain is to humble yourself. You need to pray and show God how you have desecrated your precious body, how you misuse your body. Beg him to help you. I've been such a fool. I don't want to make these choices anymore. And please help me, God. I won't live this way anymore. My life is crappy. It doesn't have to be this way. Obedience is the way. I've desecrated my soul. I know I can change. I still have a chance. My chance is getting smaller and smaller. I'm not going to choose this anymore. I'm not going to make myself a fool any longer. I've made myself such, such, such a fool. I believed all these lies and all they bring is pain. God, I've made, chosen to be so idiotic. I've been so aggressive, so vile, so mean. God, please hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. August 10th, Jody and Jay are still in Arizona. What was Jody doing to Jay? Let's talk about this. What was Jody doing to Jay? And why were they spending so much time together? Jody and Jay are still in Arizona. They should be back tonight. I am watching R in the closet and E on the back patio. It's warm outside and raining. I told R the rain is cleaning the rocks from dirt and pee. I told her to feel the rain clean her. I told her she can be as clean as she wants to be. I checked in on R, asked what he was thinking about. He said how my choices have led me here. Me. R, did you know you were in a dark pit of despair? R, what do you mean? Chilling, it says, underneath whatever's redacted. E stood in the rain for two hours. More redactions. This must be really bad. If it's shit we can't even read, imagine how bad it is. J is the older sister, Julie. August 15th, 2023, Tuesday. For the human who is not humble, today this constitutes vast majority. You have to get to your breaking point. R never would have disclosed his sins had he not had a hope that confessing would bring a sense of relief. His motive, because he was, is, not humble, was to feel better because all his distractions were taken away. Any belief he was getting them back was banished we were consistent. We followed through. R was left with only one outlet to find relief, confession. The world we live in today does not support children being uncomfortable. They, the adults, are uncomfortable with children being uncomfortable. And so children are comforted, entertained, distracted from the need to confess and change. Stripping down a child's world to the basis of Basics of beans and rice and hard work would be considered abuse, and it's not. It's necessary <clears throat> for the prideful child. Now that R has his behaviors out, all of them, feels like a failure, a monster, useless, worthless. The relief he felt in confession was short-lived, and now there is nowhere to hide. So he becomes overly aggressive, destructive, and combative. Foul language I've never heard is now pouring out. It's his only distraction, poop, pee, damage. The despair comes in. He is weak, infectious, hopeless, and never felt worse. A setup from the devil. Now this is the work. It has been three months of consistent boundaries and putting up with his terrorizing and get his confessions out. Who would do this in the real world? I don't know of anyone who would feed their kid in America beans, lentils, rice, and chicken for three straight months. Refuse all distractions. And this is why Americans are so full of sin and are ready for destruction. They won't repent. 
August 16th, day two of our jumping on a mini trampoline. He needs lots of help with balance and coordination. Dude, these kids were starved and thirsty. Today, I asked him to take off one sock by balancing on the opposite foot. Lift one foot up and remove the sock while staying balanced. He fell over, hit his nose on the ground and began bleeding. I gave him a wet rag to wipe his face, toilet paper, and toilet paper. He dabbed his face merely to smear the blood. Then he blew his nose so harshly through the toilet paper. He got new blood on his face and all over his shirt. The easiest exercises he is asked to do, he refuses with the decrepit stature you would expect of a 90-year-old. He plays completely helpless. His body is full of evil, puffy, infection, and he won't participate in the responsibility of flushing it out. Life's meaning, our life's meaning and purpose has been don't get caught. And now he's caught. He wants to be done with life. He feels he has no meaning. August 21st, poking is a strategy technique. R seems to respond to poking, pouring, cold water, towel, whip. What photos? August 22nd, 2023, first day R soaked, jumped as told. He did wet his pants twice. God Pelted hail from the heavens. He is poking R as well. R stayed jumping. Have in August, St. George. Hail in August and St. George is a mystery. A heavenly validation of this intervention. God, hope. oh no, there's more. August 27th. Did they release video or photos in this case? Blank visited for a week last week. I picked her up last Sunday, the 20th, and took her home to Springville on Friday. Jay something and Pam and I packed 20 boxes. What are they packing in boxes, yo? And took them to a storage shed in Springville. Where Did they raid the storage shed? A gave her two weeks notice. R spent the 22nd to the 25th peeing and pooping. He is out of control. He is defiant, abusive, and mean. He refuses to do what he is asked. Just when I think we found a technique that will work, R digs in and fights harder. Willingness, willing to try anything that would grab her attention. From the I whipped him with a belt yesterday. E2, she peed all over Jody's garage floor, screamed at her and lied to her. She is out of control. E seemed to give me her attention after the whipping. She sweeped the garage with some muscle and mopped it. She did a good job. R increased his defiance. Tuesday morning to Wednesday afternoon. San Diego. Taught New Jersey instead of technology, U of Washington, University of Washington, Dean at the Computing College, Robert Friedman. Send one essay for each girl, PDF of curriculum Venmo. And that is the end. We got through it. We got through it. I feel like I just. I don't even know. We got through it, though, guys. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.